I am a professional listener. More specifically, I'm a professional audio engineer and music producer. And today, what I'd like to explore with all of you are seven elements of music production that we can use in our everyday lives to become more effective listeners. Uh, what we have up here on the screen is what we call a mix session. And this is where we as music producers organize all of the instruments and sounds that you'll hear in a recording. So the first element that we're going to touch on is something that I like to refer to as level balancing. So to illustrate this, we're first going to listen to our raw drum set sound, and then we're going to hear that same drum set with level balancing. All right, so this is our raw drum set sound. And here's our level balance version. Now, that might be a little tricky for some of you to hear, and that's okay. We're going to get through this, all right? So essentially what we're doing with level balancing is we are manipulating level or volume of individual instruments to kind of help create a foundation to then build the rest of our mix, all right? And this is something that we'll do across all of the instruments when we first start out. Now, our second element is something called equalization. How many of us have ever reached for the bass or treble controls in our car stereo? Okay, so a lot of us. So we've all used a very simple form of equalization. In the audio world, we like to call this EQ, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to our drum set and we're gonna add in our bass guitar and we're gonna listen without EQ first and then with EQ. And I want you to pay special attention uh, to the cymbals in the overheads. You might, or the, I'm sorry, the drum set. Um, and you might notice that they get a little bit brighter. All right, so let's listen first without EQ. And here's with EQ. Okay, so how many of us could hear that? Okay, good, we're getting somewhere here. That's great. Very good. So what we're essentially doing with equalization is we are carving these unique sonic fingerprints for each instrument in our mix. And if we do this effectively, those fingerprints start to fit together almost like puzzle pieces. Very powerful tool. Now our third element is something that's referred to as compression. This is one of my favorite tools to use. So we're going to again listen to our drums and our bass without compression, and then we're going to add compression in. All right. Here's with compression. How many of you could hear that? Okay, great. So you might have noticed that the kick drum got a little bit louder, everything got a little more intense, right? And that's kind of what we're doing with compression. We're limiting what's called the dynamic range, or how loud or soft our instruments are. And in essence, we're making them kind of glue in place, all right? So compressor we can think of as glue, all right? Our fourth element is a tool called panning. Okay. Now, up until this point, we've been listening in what's called mono, meaning all of our sounds are right down the middle. Okay. So to illustrate that, we're going to now bring in some keyboards and some guitar sounds. And we're going to start out in mono, and then we're going to spread out to stereo, or left and right. And you might notice that some of the sounds jump over here or over here. Okay. So let's listen for that. So this is mono. And here's stereo. How many of us could hear that? Okay, great. It might have been easier for those in the middle to catch that one, all right? So what we're doing with panning is we're starting to now compartmentalize the mix and put instruments in different locations across the stereo left-right field. Okay? And this allows us, if we have things that are kind of rubbing against each other uh, with EQ, to space them out and help our listener hear that there are more than one instrument in that frequency range. Now, our next element is something that I'm sure all of you have heard, but you may not be super cognizant of it. All right? And that's what we call a time-based effect. Some of you might know this as reverberation or echo. Okay? So to show you this, we're going to listen now to uh, just our dry vocal, and then we're going to add in some effects. Maybe 
just be on the shore. Well, the ship's been gone for a year or two, but you see him there, right in front of you, and your breath is bated, as if he still sees you. How many of us could hear that? Okay, that's a pretty obvious one, right? So what we're doing with reverb and delay is we're starting to now build a little extra vibe into the track, right? It's almost a, a memory from the past, right? And these different settings that we put on here can evoke all kinds of different emotions. We'll get into that a little later. Now, our sixth tool is something called automation. And we're going to skip ahead here in our track, and we're going to listen through a transition without automation, and then we're going to hear some automation. All right, so here it is without. So we can kind of tell that the song's going somewhere. We're entering a new chapter. Right? So if we add in some automation, we can actually make that transition more interesting. So we're going to turn it on on our backing vocals and on our master track over here. And what I want you to do is not only listen, but keep an eye on this big knob that I just pulled up here. Okay? So let's listen through that same transition. <laughs> We can all hear that one, right? We're good, okay. So what we're doing here is we are automating an EQ to open up over time, okay? And we can do this with anything, with our level balancing, our acute, or, uh, compression, our panning, all right? So very powerful tool, and it's used to kind of draw the listener into the next section. It's planning for the future in a way. So let's then break down these first six elements uh, in a way that we can apply to just everyday life. Right? So if we go back, hopefully you guys were taking notes. Uh, level balancing was our first element. right? And in mix, in music production, we use level balancing to kind of create a foundation to then build off of. Right? And in life, we all start out with some type of foundation. Right? That might mean our socioeconomic status. That might mean uh, our upbringing. Right? Now, in music production, granted, we have the ability to kind of set those parameters up front, and in life we don't, but nevertheless, we all start out with some type of foundation, okay? Our second element was equalization, and in music production, we're using equalization to kind of carve out these unique sonic fingerprints. And in life, we kind of do the same thing, right? We take on these roles that form a loose identity of who we are. So maybe we're a parent or an educator, Maybe we play volleyball on the weekends, right? All of these different things kind of make us, in essence, who we are, right? So then our third element was compression. And if we remember back, compression kind of acts like a glue in music production. And in life, we have compressors as well, right? They kind of keep us in the roles that we create with EQ, okay? So uh, for instance, you might have a high-level lawyer who makes a really, really just, just tons of money, okay? And he might hate his job, but the fact that he has a really, really expensive mortgage payment he has to come up with, that's his compressor, right? And that can be good and bad. Uh, our next element was panning. And panning has to do with compartmentalization, and in a way, kind of compartmentalization of relationships, right? So for instance, we all have an inner circle in our lives, the people that we hold close to us, and we tend to keep them center panned, right? But individuals like uh, our crazy uncle that we have to see on Thanksgiving, we keep him pretty hard panned the rest of the year, right? Now, our next tool uh, was a time-based effect, a reverb, delay, these types of things. Um, and in music production, they can kind of add a little extra ambiance and some emotional character to our track, OK? And in life, we have ups and downs too, emotional ups and downs, right? So in music production, a long, lengthy uh, reverb tail on a ballad vocal might evoke emotions of pain or loss, which we go through in life. Uh, on the flip side, a short, slappy delay uh, can represent things like a promotion or a really interesting vacation that you took, right? We have these emotional roller coasters that we kind of go through. 
And then our sixth element was automation. And in music production, automation is often used to kind of build into the next section of a song. Right? And we all do this on nearly a daily basis. We're always planning for the future. Right? So maybe we are saving up to put our kids through school, or perhaps we're you know, planning for retirement. Okay? We're always planning for the future. Now, this is all well and good, but there is a seventh element to music production that I would argue trumps the previous six. And that is the ability to not just hear these previous six in isolation, but to hear them within the context of the larger mix. Right? Because if we think about it, when we listen to music on the radio, we're not hearing the kick drum on its own. We're not hearing the guitars and the EQ on those guitars in isolation. We're hearing all of these sounds swirling together in this cacophony of noise that we recognize as music. Right? So then if hearing the big picture in mix and in music production is the seventh element, what's the analogy in life? I would argue that that seventh element is our willingness and our ability to hear the needs of the community and the society around us. And two really interesting things can happen when we choose to do this. It's a very difficult process, just as it is in mix. But when we choose to make that decision, the first thing that happens is pretty obvious. We're able to serve the needs of our community with a greater de deal of efficacy. But the second is a bit more subtle, right? The second is almost a byproduct of this thought process because we start to learn something about ourselves and the role that we play within that context of the larger mix. We start to think about things like our upbringing and how we can use that perspective to help others. We start to think about the roles that we take on in life and how that can improve someone's life. I want to encourage all of you for the rest of the day, possibly the rest of the week, hopefully for the rest of your lives, to not just think about these elements in isolation and how they play into your own lives, but think about the role that they can play for the greater good. Because I sincerely believe that all of us have the power to become professional listeners. Thank you.